Ohm's law. Ohm's law is that voltage is current times resistance. Potential difference is current times resistance. V equals I R. What is Ohm's law then? Well, it applies to any ohmic resistor. Normally, the experiment you'll do will be set up like this. A power pack, a variable power pack from 0 to 12 volts. And a ammeter in series with a resistor and a voltmeter across it. Ammeters need to be in series, voltmeters need to be in parallel. You're going to turn up your power pack from 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, maybe more results than that. And you're going to measure the current and the voltage. You're going to plot a graph. V on the y-axis, I on the x. And hopefully you should see it's a straight line. That proves that V is proportional to I. If V increases, I increases. And in fact, if V doubles, then I doubles as well. OK, so you can actually use that graph to calculate a value for the resistance of that resistor. Here's how we do that. We calculate what's called a gradient. So here I take my line of best fit and I see how tall it is. 10, 10 volts tall, and I see how wide it is, 1, 1 amp wide. And then I can do a gradient. The gradient is the up distance divided by the across distance, or 10 divided by 1. So in that case, V over I, V divided by I, is the resistance. 10 divided by 1 is 10, and it's 10 ohms, which is the unit of resistance. That doesn't always apply. It only actually applies to ohmic resistors. Now, other things, such as filament bulbs, actually behave differently. Here's the same experiment, but with a bulb instead of a resistor. Same table. We're going to vary V, and we're going to measure I. And you can see that actually now we don't get double V, double I, double uh, voltage, double current. Instead, we get a graph that looks a little bit like this, where the gradient is not a constant. It's not the same slope the whole way through. And in fact, the gradient is larger at the top, so the resistance is larger later in the graph and less earlier on in the graph. Well, why is that? Well, that's because the filament, the metal in the filament, behaves like most conductors, most metals. And when you put a potential difference across the metal, you get a current flowing. That's fine. The electrons, being negative, get attracted to the positive side. Brilliant. The current flowing, unfortunately, leads to the electrons colliding with the ions. These are what's left over with the ions. And when they collide, they start the ions vibrating. The ions vibrating, well, means that there's more random motion in there, and there's more things to obstruct that flow of charge, that flow of the electrons. So the ions vibrating means that actually the resistance gets larger and larger and larger, the larger the current that flows. So you get that shape of graph. Not all uh, conductors behave like that. Some conductors we call thermistors, and they behave in the opposite way. Actually, with a higher potential difference, a higher current, you end up with a lower resistance. Well, why is that? Surely the electrons still travel and they still knock into the ions. Yes, they do. We put a, a potential difference across once more. Positive there, negative there. The electrons are going to start to move towards the positive side. They're going to do the collisions. That's fine. But that vibrating is higher heat energy. So in a thermistor, when it gets hot, the electrons actually begin to donate more electrons into the sea of free electrons or all the delocalized electrons that are available to carry the current. So the hotter it gets, the more electrons there are available, and therefore the faster the flow of charge. So this is why you get the opposite behavior, higher temperature leading to higher current or lower resistance. But you can always bet on Ohm's law, and you can always use that equation V equals IR to calculate resistance if you know voltage and current, or any one of them if you know the other two. You can always apply it because it's the law.